Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Good morning. Today is the 12th of November and this is part 10 of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2022 NEC Classic Motor Show sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. So we've done quite a few parts so far. This is only the second day of the show. We're already at part 10. Um, but we're now in very unfamiliar territory here indeed because I don't know anything at all about most of the makes of car on this stand. Um, the Relton Owners Club for Relton, Brough Superior, Hudson, Essex and Terraplanes. Don't really know anything about these at all. This is an Essex, it's from 1933, um, in right-hand drive. Original car used by Sir Guy Donville and the Baronets challenged in Brooklyn in November 33. 50 Essex cars bottled in this style by window the coachwork of Hendon. Fit is standard with a uh, 2.5 six cylinder and then um, he put in um, 3.2 litre engine. It was actually supercharged. Um, that's pretty crazy. 1937 Relton eight cylinder Torah built by car bodies just down the road in Coventry. Goodness gracious me. Big luxurious car, isn't it? What's this one? It's a rough superior. Again, I'm really not familiar with these cars. A lot of uh, makes disappeared um, due to the Second World War, and I imagine rough superior were probably one of them. So, 35 to 36, they probably can't quite work out what year it is exactly. Prototype for a new eight cylinder model. So it's had a major restoration and it looks to be of a very, very good quality. Ooh, and it's got a beige leather interior with wood. <laughs> you know, I do like a nice a beige leather interior, viewers. 1947 HRG 1100 here on the Vintage Sports Car Club stand. Um, HRGs were sort of... I think related to Fraser National somewhere, I forget now. They're not a mate that exists. I think they only existed until around 1954. Also here is this, I think this is a Trojan. It's still got the solid tyres on it. Um, this would be from the 1920s, I think. It's me. Yeah. I don't know if they're related to the Trojan bubble cars that we saw yesterday. Um, somebody will have to tell me that in the comment section below. What's this? Oh, it's Slippery Anne. Oh, okay, it's a uh, modified Austin 7 from the late 20s. Goodness gracious me, is that really supposed to be a two-seater. Gosh, I couldn't even get in there. <laughs> uh, what have we got here? Oh, an ERA, excellent. 1935, I have heard of ERA. Um, that exhaust looks <laughs> a little bit dangerous. Um, we don't want to do with Henry Birkin, do we, viewers? We'd better get him the right-hand side if we have that. Um, is that not a mirror? I don't actually know what that is, then, viewers. Interesting. Ooh, Adams Brothers Tribute Stand. That's in Adams Probe 16. Why, viewers, we are in esteemed company today. Yes, look at this sort of clockwork orange. Because that was an Adams Probe 16. And well, here is an Adams Probe 16. It's me, yeah, about the right to the era. The film was made in 1971. Uh, this is a 6970. I can't even remember what the engine beast have in the views. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no doors at all. You have to sort of leave yourself in. That looks entertaining. 
this looks like a sort of different type. I don't know what the difference between those two is, but it's definitely the 16. This, I have absolutely no idea. Again, there's no doors. Um, yeah. Wow. It's just absolutely crazy. Slightly less crazy is these uh, Marcuses. You've got a Mantara V8. Um, 1993 to 1994 plate with a cream leather interior. Yeah, it's actually 94. Holstery refurbished very nicely by the leather repair company in West Midlands. Mm, dark blue with a cream leather interior. Very much the kind of thing we like, viewers. And uh, what do we what do we have here? I can't remember the Marcos model of this. I think they were perhaps badged by engine size. Some of them had a V6, some of them I think were Volvo engines. I forget the name of these, uh, 7071 registration. This one here again, I don't, I don't know actually, this is 65. I can't remember the name of this model now. They look very similar to the 90s ones as well, although that's got Ford Fiesta Mark II door handles on it. There you go, it's a Marcos 1800. I imagine it's the uh, BMC, BMC um, B series engine in there. Talking of BMC, let's have a look at some Austin Healy's whilst we're here. That is very nice views. That's very, very nice indeed. Mm. Like these things. So, uh, 1954 Austin Healy 100. That, I think, is a BN1 model, then. Why is it got a seat in the middle? Would, would you really want to sit on that seat there? Maybe if you're a child or something, but dear me. Um, Austin Healy Frog Eye Sprite. This would be uh, probably an early one. Oh, yes, it's a very early one. It's a pre-production car. It was built in May 1958. It's a very early one. It's basically just similar to an Austin A35 in some ways these years. Um, same sort of mechanicals, but sort of made very sporty. Another Healy 100 here, or Austin Healy 100. Uh, Le Mans Special from, yeah, it's another BN1 from 1954. Um, since we're here, the Midland. Auto Club and Chelsea Walsh have got some stuff here. What on earth is this? It looks a bit like a sort of Formula 3 car or something. What is this? Uh, it's a Gould 59... GR59J. Never heard of that. I have heard of the 1969 Opel GT 1900. I think this is the first year that these were made, actually. So it's a very early one. Um, not obviously made for our market. This would have been imported from the continent, probably, yes. by that sort of sticker there. Taxili Automobile, yeah, it's uh, been imported in France, isn't it? Uh, so 1900cc Camin Head Opel engine. That's very nice. So a uh, little Nuova 500 here. Nuova Cinquecento. No, it's 964. I thought it was a pre suffix, it's not. This has had a, a sort of custom interior put in it. That's been breathed on a bit, hasn't it, viewers? That'll be a little bit faster than with sort of 19 horsepower these originally came with. No, no. It's not standard at all. Oh, it's been modified. Lotus 61, built in 1969 as a Formula Ford. And then we've got some other cars from roughly the same sort of area. Um, Morgan from Malvern. TOK258, this looks early 60s. It's got a uh, Triumph TR3 engine and a good old Moss 4-speed gearbox. 
978 Morgan plus 8 drop head coupe. So we'll have the Rover V8 engine in it then. Ooh, we've got interesting, interesting hood here. Oh, both look like British Leyland common stops. No surprise there, really, is it? Much later, Morgan here. Well, it doesn't look much later, but it is, of course. Because they've looked like this for a really, really, really long time. Uh, ooh, is a R100 Roadster, special anniversary model with Ford 3 litre V6. Car was delivered in March 2010. Excellent. I like the information sheets for you, they're very helpful. Uh, 2017 Morgan Plus 4, uh, 2 litre Ford Duratec. It's probably that engine in the Master MX-5, isn't it, of the year? Uh, probably one of those. Uh, yeah, 2007, not 2017. Yeah, definitely would be the um, Master MX-5 engine. Although it was also badged as Ford Duratec. Uh, Morgan 4.4. Uh, this looks like it's around 1986, yeah, 1986. And uh, let's just check out some interiors though. We've got a sort of cream one here and a luggage rack, that's quite handy. I don't think there is a boot in these, but this one, mm, a beige leather interior with wood. Very nice looks, and that uh, looks rather nice. This one is well, it's quite a late one, isn't it, on the 60 plate, so. 2010 to 2011 actually in this one excellent colour for a Morgan you're very welcome to sit in the car uh, fingers and blood if I'm even top it. yeah so 1.6 uh, Ford which is a Sigma uh, Z-Tech SE Duratec same engine is actually in um, the uh, contemporary Fiesta at the time there 1955 Morgan Drophead Coupe. Uh, this is four. Uh, plus, plus four. One plus four. Well, someone's got a proper camera there, unlike the one I'm using. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. So, what year is this one then? Uh, it's a 1.8 twin cam, is that a, it's a Ford, oh it's a Ford engine, it's a 1999. Um, yeah, I don't actually know which Ford it be, like if it's from the Sierra or something like that I presume, maybe a Type 9 gearbox as well. If anybody could tell me where those indicator and wiper stops are from, please let me know, I've always wondered about that. Walking three-wheeler, all super sports from... 1936, engine's right out the front there. Interesting weight distribution. March 2020, Morgan Plus 4. Um, I can't remember what engine was up. I think there might be a BMW engines now, these days actually, yes. from what I can recall. Still the same traditional kind of styling though. It's amazing they can just keep this up in the uh, 2020s, isn't it? Right, let's have a look at um, some Ford engine cars here. 289 register, that'll be to do with uh, Cobra and things like that. I'll look at some um, GT40 cars though. Most of these I imagine will be uh, be replicas because the original ones are worth several million pounds so um, they're probably some kind of ones that are, that are here is that an actual original car well it says it is it could be this one of course is a replica uh, way too late on the 69 plate to be a real one it doesn't actually matter really I mean it, it's just amazing seeing them here at all and uh, this one over here, I can, I can tell you that is a real one. Yeah, it absolutely is a real one, owned by the Ford Motor Company. Um, Ford press plate. Wow. That's amazing. That Ford have actually loaned that to be here. To, oh, that blows my mind. Views. Normally, you only ever see the replica. That's a real one. Wow.
Oh, that's an information sheet here. Let's just be careful. There we go. Yeah, it's a continuation car. Um, built in 2016. Yeah. The standard, though, of these, of these replicas is absolutely amazing. It's really, really hard. Obviously, it's got a Q plate on it, so that's a good get the way. And this one, the plate's a lot later, but... Yes. If you want a car that looks really striking like this, it might be a really good way to go. So we've got some Cobras. We might actually have some uh, genuine Cobras here today. See if we have. Uh, Mark III Cobra, manufactured in, um, from 65, 67. So that's a, that's a real one. Excellent. We're doing well today, aren't we? Uh, 289 Cobra. 65. Yes, amazing. Brilliant. Very blessed to actually see you know, real GT40s and real Cobras. This will be uh, an Ace, though. Um, yeah, use their own engine, not a full engine. Uh, this one... I should say which... Uh, this, this one I'm on this. No, not two, but two litre. I'm getting that sort of from wrong views, I'm afraid. A Le Mans Cobra. Wow, this is a, what's it called? Um, Le Mans 66, I think the name of the film is. Or Ford versus Ferrari in some markets. 63, yeah, it's on an A, there we go. This one, Cobra Daytona Coupe. Goodness me, so this will be about 64, something like that. Absolutely and utterly priceless, yeah, don't touch, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Get a little bit hot in there, though, because with, a, with such a tiny amount of ventilation. Right, let's um, see if we can find something a little bit different. I think I missed this uh, 63 Healy 3000 Mark II earlier on, but uh, there we go, there it is. And there's some MX-5s here. I have driven all the generations of MX-5, apart from the current one. Although I have driven a 124 Spider is based on them. So NC here, I wonder if this is quite a late one like the one I drove, uh, when I drove the 2012. Uh, no it's not, but it's the pre facelift one. Uh, 2005 is a very, very early one then actually, 2005, it's the first year they came out. And yeah, like uh, this car, the NA MX-5 that I drove wasn't really an MX-5 at all, it was a UNOS. Uh, this will be around 95, 96. This one's a manual, the one I drove was an auto. Yeah, 94 actually, so uh, been registered a little bit after it would have been imported. Um, lots and lots of little scuttle shake in that one. I also drove an NB like this one um, in um, 2019 on Two Jacket Reviews. This one I think is, yeah, it's a pre face so it's a 99. 10th anniversary model with some very very shiny wheels indeed and uh, yes current generation one here and D um, it's the sport tech you actually can get a light colored interior with them. definitely not have that if I had one of those Ooh, the Jensen Owners Club. There's some tasty treats here, viewers. Jensen Healy from 1973. Yes, um, the story of this is so convoluted as to how it came to be and what engine it used. It's just absolutely incredible. Nice interior, though. Uh, must be a Getrard gearbox there, because it's the uh, dog leg one. Jensen CV8. Um, most famous use of these, of course, is in, is in the Baron. Um, this is the same type. This is a Mark III from 65. It's a very similar registration to the actual registration that um, the Baron one had, although it was BER1 in the series. It was something EA, something, something C as well, like this. Made in West Bromwich. 
Jetson 541R from 1960. Forget exactly what um, engines these have now. The uh, CV8s had a V8, <laughs> unsurprisingly. Um, these didn't. That's a straight engine. I think it's a six I think it's sort of like a BMC engine or something like that, from what I remember. I, I, I forget now. Um, Mark II CV8. Ooh, that announcement was good. 1964. It doesn't have a little trapdoor thing on the bonnet, though, so I don't know if this one does as well. So, a trapdoor theme, dude. It was that a feature of all the CV8s? Answer in the comments section below. Let's have another look at another Jensen Healy. There was a Jensen GT, is very available as well. Uh, what is this one? What year is this one? Uh, it's a Mark II, okay, so it's a bit different. Uh, registered in 1974. Lotus engine. Quite a slot, isn't it? Right over there. That's um, interesting. Ooh, do we have some Lotuses here? Yes, we do. And we've got an Alain, an M100 Alain, as the number plate suggests. Mm. Front wheel drive, a Zuzu engine. Apparently one of the best front wheel drive cars for handling ever made. And that one's actually got a beige leather interior as well, so that's even better. Esprit GT3. Now I forget exactly when these were made. There's a sheet on there that probably will tell me. Yeah, November 1996. It's got the uh, Mark III Cavalier door handles on there. These, I think, were made until 2004. So a really, really long production life for these. Someone said, let's window open for me as well. That's very nice of them. I think it's a Runner 25 gearbox in those, from memory. Oh, yes, an Evora 400. When James Martin from JM1 Car started his channel, it was going to be a Lotus channel, and he had an Evora. Um, it's 50 years. Can't remember exactly. Oh, 316. Phew. <laughs> it's helped me out there by putting a the article on it, so uh, there we go. 3.5 Toyota engine. 2005 TVR Cigar, so one of the last TVRs made, I think. I think that's their own engine in there by this stage. 2000 TVR Chimera 500. That's a 5 litre version of the Rover V8. Yeah, it's still got the uh, funny door handles that you get in by pressing the bottom of the mirror. Ooh, a little one there as well. Very careful, I don't fall over or anything there. That's um, actually not good if I do that. We've got some old TVRs here as well. This one's Vixen. Be about 1969, 1970. Make sure we don't fall. Okay. Sorry. Uh, 69 TVR Vixen S2. It's actually one of those in um, the last ever episode of The Saint. The world beater. The last one filmed anyway. This one was in Penthouse, yeah, they used to get the uh, models in there in the back of the data. I've posed with these. Uh, 8990 TVR 400SX, so a sort of wedge one. Mark III Capri door handles, I think. Rear lights, oh, I can't remember what these are off actually, these rear lights, I forget. And then we got a Cerbera here in this bright purple, but it has actually got a beige leather interior in there too. Not entirely leather, it has got some other bits to it as well, but that's nice to see. These are really, really fast. 4.2 uh, litre engine, it's TVR's own engine. It's a similar car to the one used in Swordfish. Which, of course, wasn't that model, but um, the colour might be similar. All of it's, yes, some other old ones. TVR Tamer from 1979. It's actually got a Ford SXV6 in it. And 62 Grand Chira. It's got 1.8 
B series in it. Accident. Real lights to DCs. They, 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 I know the later ones had the Mark One Cortina, but this doesn't at all. This is before that they used those. And these rear lights, they look like the same ones used in the Jensen Healy, but I might be wrong about that. Does this have a beige look at Oh, it certainly does. It's very nice. And does this one have a beige leather interior as well? <laughs> yes, it does, viewers. And it's actually got some wood trim in it, too. Mm. Very, very nice. CVR Griffith 500. Okay, and uh, this one here. F Sagaris. Right, next stand. The Ferrari owners of a Great Britain have supplied some nice ones. This is a 87 Mondial 3.2. This is a very affordable Ferrari compared to most of them. Still got uh, 12 hours per cylinder though. Sorry. Um, Ferrari 400, I think this would be. Late 70s. Interesting interior. Don't know if it's beige leather or not. Yes, it's a 400 GT from 1978. Yeah, they've bought some sort of more kind of interesting Ferraris, actually, but sort of less seen ones on show circuit, which is nice. 78 Ferrari Dino with the Dino badge by now. The earlier ones of these didn't have the Ferrari badge on them, just known as a Dino. Uh, GT4 of 78. This, I think, was the pre test to the Mondial. That does look like a beige leather interior, my viewers. Mm. It's cream on camera, but it looks beige to me. So, there we go. Excellent. Let's have a look at um, the uh, Sam's detailing stand here. Some very shiny things. It's a very early Unos. It's an 89 or 90 Unos, actually. That's been very extensively detailed, rather like this uh, um, it's a uh, DAX um, Cobra replica from 2018, with a Chevy V8 in it. Nineteen ninety-five Subaru Impreza Double RX STI 555 version 2. Excellent, yes, of course, the Subaru blue rally colour with the gold wheels, of course. I think I've seen this four door Mark 1 Escort before with no door handles. I presume you have like a sort of separate remote so you can pop the door handles. It's useful at shows though, but people don't, don't just get into your car. Um, 800XL, so yeah, it's got a 1.8 ZTEC R in it. Um, 7273. Ooh, here we go, viewers. Um, starter motor stand. And an ADO 16 here as well. See, so I've just driven an ADO 16 on the uh, on the channel. This is a much later one than the one I drove. This will be about 1970, 1971. Uh, it's Austin 1300. Very nice uh, Jaguar XK here. Mm, that's not a beige leather interior, though. In fact, it's definitely a cream one. From 2004. And then a Jaguar S Type. Yes, it is. A uh, late S Type. 6768 registration. And you can win this for two weeks. Should I enter the draw, viewers? I don't know. Maybe. And um, what's this over here we've got? Is that a Singham Online Le Mans? It is, it's a Singham 9, it's not a Le Mans model, but um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 9 from 1933. One of the uh, most important stands in here, apart from the Maguire's one, is the Lancaster Insurance Pride of Ownership stand. And uh, we've got some interesting ones on here. We just dodge the people through here, there's a lot of people here today. Um, Austin A40 Devon 
can't say the exact year on there. Um, so I imagine it's about 1950. Yeah, it's a 51 tax disc, so it'll be about then. And um, there's a J40 pedal car next to it as well. But you could buy one of those until 1971. That's pretty crazy. This car looks a lot nicer, actually, in real life and on camera. The, the colour's not coming out particularly well on, on camera, unfortunately, uh, which is a shame. And a Yugo Sana, like... <laughs> this one, I don't think, is actually on the road at the moment. This is the one people keep telling me about. Whenever I see or, or, or mention Ian Seabrook's former Yugo Sana, it's now owned by Mr. Pink. Um, but we've actually had on the channel ourselves. This one keeps being mentioned. It, I don't know if it's actually one even runs, but these are as rare as rare can be. Um, this is uh, an 89, and it's just been picked up from the Yard of White. So, yeah, very early one. Right, one of these outspun oranges. There actually are kind of various ones of this. I think this is a 72. This one is normally at Bewley. There we go, designer constructed 1972. Uh, presumably in, um, in Bur Why is it written in Birmingham? It's probably because the Dono vehicle's a Mini. That's probably why. And then uh, Sarah Crabtree, formerly of Bangers and Cash and Matthewson's Auctions. There she is, there she, there she is just there. This is uh, Morris et al. I knew it was here. We've seen it several times actually before, viewers. It seems to uh, crop up at all sorts of shows, doesn't it? But uh, it's nice to see it here. It's a very good colour for, for, uh, for these. It's a 1980, that one. Is this a Meadows Frisky Sport? Yes, it is, from 1957. Yeah, Meadows Frisk Sport. Prototype made for the Oscar Motor Show. I don't think I really want to drive that vehicle. It would have problems if I did. Oh, here we go. 1972 MGB GT. I, I'm supposed to be having a 72 MGB GT on my channel at some point. Uh, the chap who owns it, Captain Reed, and I keep having discussions about it. And for whatever reason, it just keeps not happening, which is a shame. So, 1979 Trans Spitfire, one of the last ones made actually, um, with the 1.5 engine. This one's very, very nice. That's very, very nice indeed. Also very nice. Um, I'd be remiss of me not to actually film this at the end of this part. We're going to have to go to the next part in a bit. But there is a very, very nice early Triumph TR6 just here as well. So thank you ever so much for once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this video, leave a comment below. And uh, we'll see you in part 11. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t shirts, and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below.